And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Noxus Tribeam. We have a Noxus Allegiance deck with a lot of three mana cards and Tribeam Improbulator. So if you don't know Tribeam Improbulator, four mana, slow speed spell, deals one to a unit and also summons a random one cost follower. But every time we, if we have this in our hand, every time we play a three cost card, we get to bump those up by once. You know, we play four three cost cards and now suddenly Tribe Beam and Primalator is dealing five damage and summoning a random five cost follower for four spell mana, which is pretty incredible. And so we're going to, we're going to be kind of aggressive. You know, we have like Draven's biggest fan to help us find Draven because that's just a basically a card that we always want to play on turn two or sorry on turn three <laughs> and then we have house spider and legion grenadier uh leading up into these threes and you know it's so like all of these three mana cards um are all very good we can play one of them on turn three another one on turn four another one on turn five turn six we can start double spelling with them um but yeah you can see we got arachnoid sentry draven iron ballista katarina riven um pretty awesome and if we save spell mana from the first couple of turns we can have some of these spells also sharpened resolve is a great pump spell um that you know also cost three mana for our improbulator scorched earth even some treasure doing some cycling for us so we have all sorts of three mana cards that we try to uh, play a lot of these and get a big improbulator and use this improbulator to um uh, really help turn the tides right like it, that's a, a big thing you know being able to like kill a champion and get a really nice threat in play for one card um, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. So because we're playing all these Noxus cards, we are going to go ahead and go with our Noxus Allegiance card, Basilis Grider, um, we can be a four mana, five, four overwhelm. And, uh, let's see, we got Kato over here, um, you know, just being a great attacker, giving some more, uh, overwhelm and plus three plus zero with its support and survival skills being an awesome card to discard to a Draven and just, you know, good at quality card besides that with a Captain Farron at the top end. So it should be a pretty cool card, or a pretty sh cool deck. Going to be doing a lot of attacking and everything with our Noxus cards. Let's go ahead and uh, head on over to ranked for our four games. For our five games. Why did I say four? <laughs> so there are five games in ranked. Okay, playing against some Frostbite. Prediction has started. If you'd like to wager channel points, whether we're going to win or lose. Looking at our opener, love the Tribune Probulator, love the Iron Ballista. I think we're gonna actually just mulligan the Phlox, right? Like I don't have too much to use the Phlox with. Now the Phlox, it's, Phlox are really nice with this card, Arachnoid Sentry. And it's also just really nice because it's, it's some interaction that costs one mana. Because sometimes we may start off a little slow with having everything cost three mana. So it's a good way to be able to kind of uh, catch up or, you know, again, a really good tempo play for a one mana card. Um, with this, we are going to be able to use that one spell mana with having this Tribeam and Probulator, so we'll be okay there. Frostbite cards are going to be pretty good against me, especially Brittle Steel. Both Brittle Steel and Troll Chant. Would be good quality tricks for my opponent to have. Tread carefully. <laughs> we got Harvey in the background. I guess I'm. I guess I'm a little off camera. There we go. I want to make sure to get me and Harvey. What's up, New Jersey Devils? Thank you so much. Yeah, can't miss your tie in this classy stream. Thanks for that continued support there. Five months. As our second sub of the day. Yeah, they're Ash Sejuani. Yep. Okay, let's go with Draven it's time. Draven time. Should keep them from attacking, but maybe not. Sure about that? Now we're cooking. Mm. 
All right, Tribeam's dealing three right now. I'm gonna go ahead and stun the Ash because you know has the four health and that's annoying. So I'll stun it so we don't have to attack into it. All right, good cooling strike. Or, you know what? What if I just do this? Get a four-cost unit that can attack right now also. So maybe, yeah, maybe I should have just gone Iron Blister to begin with. Okay, good thing we went with stun. What do we got? Wow. That's a pretty awesome <laughs> four drop to hit. So basically, we just spent four mana for Basilis Grider, but we spent spell mana, so that was easier than unit mana. Plus, we dealt two damage to their Ash. Plus, we got rid of their Elixir of Iron from hand. <laughs> we did all that. That was pretty awesome. Okay, good. Um, I was thinking maybe they'd play Reckoning. Definitely want to play a five power thing because of Reckoning. Okay, so immediately two attacks or play something first. I think immediately two attacks. So a card like Sejuani could be a big problem. Yeah, I like the open attack here. Let's go with that. No backing down. <laughs> yeah, we yep, we have a Garen a uh, Garen Riven donation deck from uh, Big Frog. Wow. Wow, they're frostbiting those, but they're at eight. Okay. The time is right. Strike now. That level up Ash? Not quite. Alright, so I can put them down to one with the Sharpened Resolve, or I kill, or they're at four and I kill Ash. And I think it makes more sense to have them just be at four and kill Ash. I guess that, that still does, actually it's three, because yeah, because it still does one Overwhelm. Done yet. So yeah, it was just a two point difference to get Ash out of here, that definitely makes sense. Um, I guess I could have played one of these. I kind of clicked end of turn, but I guess I could have played one. Welcome to the tipsy I would have played this card right here. Because right again, reckoning. Only the finest serve. The party has yeah, I could have had Iron Blister in right now also. I would have played this rider last turn. Should have that Iron Ballista in play, too. Good morning, Dark Dragoon. But even though that's the case, I don't think I play the double Ballista now. I think we go to attacks again. Let's see what you've got. Let's talk about your tab. Let's put them down to one. So that's that's kind of that's kind of difficult, right? Like they're saying GGs because this puts them down to one. They're not using a frostbite card. Are they expecting me to be like, okay, cool, I can win this. I'll just go spinning axe, and now I have the win. And then they go like harsh wins afterwards, um, right? Like that that could be bait there. They could be baiting me into playing the spinning axe. You hoping they'll die of boredom? I think it feels like bait as well. I'm gonna take this board state. Some treasure's good. I need just a moment. 
They haven't really shown Reckoning yet. Wow. Wow. Oh, that makes things messy. Now I wish I had like the two spinning axes. Like that was my my thought process was I could still save one of these things with a reckoning. Time for the money it's still worth it. Yeah, we should be able to just win with Captain Fair next turn. Um, you know, thirteen mana is perfect for you know Captain Fair and plus one decimate. So we, we should be just fine in that regard. I mean, I saved one life by blocking with Kato. Oh, that's worth one life. That should do it. GG. This will be an interesting one. Another Draven deck with Zoe. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, they're definitely a survival skills deck for sure. I kind of want to keep Flock. It's another like super cheap card. I kind of want to keep Flock. Let's do it. We know we're drawing Draven. So far, Ravenous Flock would have, like, just so far in these very, very, very small sample, Ravenous Flock would be better as, um, just Blade's Edge, right? One mana deal one. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, like, last game, we would have killed the 5-1 Challenger with Blade's Edge. This game, we would kill Zoe. So the smallest of sample sizes... Trickster never loses because Zoe makes the rules. <laughs> Alright, keeping the flock looks like that was a mistake. We've drawn our other flock. We have two in the deck. I was thinking that maybe like that the, our one mana two one would deal damage to something and then we would flock after that. Oh, I kind of wanted to kill this Arena Battlecaster, but may maybe we need to kill the Zoe. Yeah, I guess it's Zoe. Yeah, it's Zoe. Then I block Battlecaster with Draven, or with that thing, or block that thing. Um... Alright, Ravenous Flock doesn't matter. I'm going to level up Draven. Eh. Alright, Ravenous Flock will kill that thing. I am very shocked they have that card, though. That Pale Cascade. Because I just dealt two damage to the Zoe. I guess Zoe was just a 1-1. One, one. Never mind. I was going to say, like, why didn't they just save the Zoe? 
But never mind. Zoe's just a long one. I wouldn't say Zoe. Never mind. Kato. Oh, man, tough choice. Kato Clock. Or... Iron Ballista. The reason why to play Iron Ballista is that then I, you know, I can flock the Battlecaster. Because like if I play Kato, and if they go to open attacks, they get the Battlecaster bonus, and I don't get to flock in time. You hoping they'll die of boredom? And there's me! More Zoe's. What's up, an, an uneducated potato? I got your donation deck, the Heimer Abyss. That one's yours. Ah. Uh, yeah, they're just gonna go to open attack now for sure. Looks like I should have played Iron Ballista. That's too bad. That's too bad. I would not want to be you. <sighs> yep. Should have played Ballista and Flock. That was a tough. That was a tough call. Which one to do? Got an axe with your name on it. Oh man. Time for the money makers. This puts me down to two. Oh wait, why they why they pump oh they they did not need to pump that up. That was a waste. Doesn't matter. GG's. So, I would have only saved two life. Yeah, it's like, we still would have lost if I would have gone with the three drop and flock last turn, because we would have only saved two life here, and they would have just put the spinning axe on something else and made sure I went down to four, and then... Okay. One and one. Oh. Okay, so we're going to mulligan the Scorched Earth. Not that easy to deal damage to stuff. And we'll mulligan uh, Basilisk Rider. Basically, with this deck, we're just going to always mulligan, like, the four plus cost units. Every matchup. We should have, like, plenty of threes. I guess we could keep, if we, if we like, already have, like, the other three cards that we know we want, and, you know, like, that we're keeping all of those, and then we could keep, like, the Basilis Crider as, like, the four if we so Get choose. Get paid. Time to make some coin. Captain's orders. Bullet to the face. And to their surprise, I'm going to play Draven on turn three. They probably had it. No idea that I had a turn three Draven. Not with that Draven's biggest fan or anything. Not my first gun fight. The game matchmaker is not bugged at all, Jack. Red card. Who says I don't share? Katarina would give me the blade's edge to kill the two one, but I'm going to go ahead and play this pilfer goods. Don't stand in my way. Okay, let's see where we're at. So we're at three with this Tribeam Improbulator. That put me down to two mana. Um. Who's gonna get in my way? 
think attacking is my best course of action. In my sights. Ooh, got some fighting ya. Came a long way from both. Yeah, maybe Katarina was the play right there. Well, out. What's up, Badger Bear? Safety will cost you. We ride for Noxus. All right, hit our allegiance. That's good. Stealing all my Noxus cards. They stealing all my Noxus cards. It's a good open attack, though, also. That's kind of a... The thing is, like, it's a good open attack, but open attacks... Like, we need Katarina in attacking, otherwise Katarina's not going to be doing a whole lot either, right? So, like, it's... We're, it's kind of a difficult situation. I'm not done. Um, I guess I'd rather block... I'd rather stun this thing and ha force them to block with the 3-3. Three, three. Well, let's see, where... Because where are you? You're at 2, so then you're going to turn into 3. I'm always up for a round or two. All that glitters. I can also go like you know, I can go Blades Edge Scorched Earth together while we have that, but it, I think it makes sense to get another three cost follower in here. And make this attack even better. Gets yours. It's another good three cost follower. Get two of those. Charmed, I'm sure. And I believe that's game. There it is. Tri-Beam and Probulator did a ton of work for us, that's for sure. Um. Alright, so we're playing against some They Who Endure. We'll see if we can out-aggro them. We're going to mulligan the spells. I think I'm gonna mulligan. I think yeah, we're gonna mulligan the dredger also. I'm gonna just keep Riven as our three drop. Yeah, we can find another one. <laughs> yeah, what if our what if our tribune and populator hits the PNZ allegiance card, and then uh, you know we hit it for four, and then like we actually hit with the with the PNZ allegiance card. That would be difficult. We don't have that many PNZ cards. This game we already have two of our. I think there's five total, and so we have two of the five in our hand already. Ravenous Flock has looked pretty terrible. But to be fair, I have not had Ravenous Flock with the uh, with the stun card yet. Okay, our hand may be a little slow, being all three mana cards. Maybe a tad slow here. I have the best job. 
Alright, Draven makes a lot of sense to play to unlock Whirling Death. For whenever they attack the next turn. Axes coming right up. Yeah, turn two, nine power is always pretty good. Attacking for nine on turn two, not bad. <laughs> Would have been nice to have you earlier. Draven's biggest fan to be a nice blocker. Yeah, like they have they have to capitalize on this pretty quickly because yeah, the, it cost them a lot of cards to get those um, to get those nine power in play. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I should I should have gone I should have gone Draven Overwhelm here, because then I could have made Draven a four four. I didn't think about that too much, but yeah, if I would have used both spinning axes, we would have made Draven a four four, so Draven would survive the combat. I could discard, um, you know, the flock and then something else. I was born in battle and raised by war. Uh, it's Draven time. Guy in Shades, what what is your donation deck? Let's see, looks like I'm on a, a new page. What kind of deck is it? So they made Pale Cascade from Unspeakable Horror and they just wasted Pale Cascade right there to draw a card. Guess they wanted to play something else with their three mana. Probably is at four. So I can only single spell this round. Time for the main event. I'm kind of guessing they have like they who endure atrocity, like that kind of stuff in hand. How they haven't really been playing that much else the last two turns. So I think that that's a, a fairly safe assumption. No more hesitation. <laughs> what you doing, Harvey? What you doing? There you are. Watch and learn. Time for the money maker. Alright, so we're discarding four spinning axes. To level up Draven. They could also have Glimpse Beyond. Uh, makes that worse. I just discarded four spinning axes for nothing. They saw that coming. Should have just accepted the damage. You know, they do have a they who endure. It's possible I'm going to need like you know improbulator plus ravenous flock of taking it down. You know, so like this turn, I'm planning on going ballista and some treasure. What does he want from me? I think I'm playing Kato before. Everyone's a god. I think I'm playing Kato next turn before attacks. Lady Elise, where are you? I'll have the mana for like Kato plus Tribeam. But not not anything else, not like a flock or a fragment. Nah, I'd just rather have the spinning axe. I don't I don't need to worry about okay, cool, overwhelm. I don't really need to worry about the pesky specter stuff. What time is it? 
Because if they do play like they who endure right now to block, that is, you know, playing they who endure before all this other stuff dies, which is kind of good for me. It's 12? Oh, I can only do 11. I guess, I mean, I think we just have to attack with everything. You have to get me out of here. There's still much to answer for. I mean, that's perfect no block by the, their they who endure. It's just such a perfect no block. I shouldn't play Kato, right? I, I need another man. I like I if I would have just if I would have just played the sum treasure first. Then, you know, like the sum treasure would have turned it into eight, that would have been twelve. Um yeah, that guy shouldn't have played that. Yeah. That's that's twice playing Kato. That's both like that's twice playing Kato just cost me so bad. Yeah, maybe I sh should have played my Tri-Beam before attacking and gotten the 7 mana card before attacking, I suppose. But if I would have done that, you know, I would have had the mana for Ravenous Flock. Yeah, I just, I just couldn't play Kato there. I had to play some treasure. Alright, Taric Lux. This Kato is killing me. Alright, we're gonna get rid of it. And... I think I may mulligan everything, honestly. Yeah. Because, like, those are perfectly fine, like, perf perfectly reasonable 3 mana cards with the Sum Dredger and the Iron Ballista, but our deck is filled with perfectly reasonable 3 mana cards. And I would rather have our very above average 3 mana cards of the champions, especially Draven. And so I think that's a good just mulligan. Oh. Rider's not bad. Rider's not bad. My plan here is like flock this thing, they play something else to block, I stun that other thing to block, and I get a nice healthy attack for 9 in. That's my plan. Like maybe they play Taric. Mage Seeker. Well, that was unfortunate that Swiftwick Lancer creating this worked out pretty well for them. That they got to double spell. This is the kind of deck that doesn't usually get have two units that cost, you know, the total cost four or less. Like that's pretty rare for them. So that, that Swiftwing Lancer um, definitely helped them out, saved them three life. Denote. 
is magic. Man, and then they drew another persuader. Yeah. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. Stand in, you have no alibi. You can't outrun justice. Time for the money makers. I mean, it's probably worth me spending the the three mana spell to get, kill a four two overwhelm you or four sorry four two challenger. Boredom. Like when I have these things. It's ridiculous. Triple Mage Seeker Persuader. With Remembrance, it's just living the dream. Yeah, I guess I could have saved Draven with that pump spell. Yeah, and and of course, yeah, the the, the remembrance gave him that other uh, two two. You know, like the the remembrance was just also perfect. Getting the Swiftwing Lancer, they got him the two two to to be able to block. Yeah, this is when really this is gone. They've had a, a lot of good variants here. Now, to be fair, I've had some very good Tribeam hits in some earlier games. So I have had some good variants with Tribeam and Propulator. A rare jewel. <clears throat> Never submit. And if they do single combat and kill, yeah, kill Kato. We have this Scorched Earth. That's a nice Scorched Earth. Um, so that that worked out. That turn worked out pretty well for us. So I can go to open attacks, and we can discard with Spinning Axe, make it four. Plus, remember, if they would kill the Grenadier, they would do one damage. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, it is Kato, or sorry, not Kato, but Captain Farron. Uh, Captain Farron was, you know, like so. I, I don't know what to do there. I don't know if. You, what do y'all think? What you know, my opponent just conceded. But should I just go to open attacks and discard my spider, and just try to attack for four, or do I play the Captain Farron first? I think probably either way. I think we're still at like twenty, so I think we're just fine. So I, I think that. Just going to open attacks and discarding the spider to deal four makes sense. Yeah, or I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's play Captain Farron. Um, maybe it's not even discard the spider. Maybe you just keep that anyway and just, just put him down to one. Yeah, you would have just like regular attack, put him to one, then Farron, and then you have all those decimates. That's probably the play. Then you have all those decimates and they can't kill your 3-2 because they would die. And then you'd still have the you'd still have the spider on defense, the arachnoid sentry on defense. I think I think that's kind of what I was leaning towards actually is just attack, put him to one, and then play Captain Farron. All right, so there we go. So that's our Noxus Tribune deck. It it played pretty well. Um, both of our losses were ones that I thought that we were going to be winning, and then just you know some things happened and we ended up losing. Um, you know, but both both of those I was I was pretty confident in our winning, and you know, like we played a Kato. I tapped out for Kato both times. And got pretty punished by tapping out both times. Um, so who knows? Maybe with like different decisions, maybe I could have won at both of those. Maybe not. Um, I'm not sure. You know, especially the they who endure. Maybe, you know, maybe I wouldn't have won that anyway. Um, but I think our first loss, I probably could have won. But it felt pretty powerful. A lot of these Noxus cards are good, and Tribeam and Probulator is just amazing with all of these cards. It really was. Um, yeah, the Tribune Probulator was very, very good. Now, maybe maybe it's not worth being Noxus Allegiance, though. Maybe Basilis Grider isn't that... Like, the Basilis Grider was good. Like, I, yeah, it was it was good for us. Like, the 5-4 Overwhelm, it was good. 
but maybe it's not good enough to be um, so Noxus heavy. Because we, we saw that like Ravenous Flock was pretty poor, and maybe just being able to go to PNZ and have, um, you know, like maybe, if, like if we don't have to, if we don't have to be all Noxus, we don't have to play Ravenous Flock and Scorched Earth, and instead we can play Mystic Shot and Aftershock. And like maybe maybe that's just a, a pretty big upgrade of playing Mystic Shot Aftershock, where you have like direct Nexus damage with all these Noxus cards, um, and then you know you can still destroy a landmark with Aftershock. It's possible that that's worth it, and yeah, because you know like we just saw plenty of times where we couldn't cast the Flock. It's possible that that's worth it, and then you don't need to worry about the Rider. Um, what would you play at four instead of Rider if you didn't care about? that it's not like you have like a great option you know like you have like brutal hunter chump womp um crowd favorite is not really a crowd favorite deck crimson awakener i guess maybe crimson awakener but you know that doesn't have overwhelm so you don't have like great options to replace it 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 is the best you know basil scryder is definitely better than any of those other cards so maybe maybe that's worth the trade trade off maybe it's not worth the trade off i'm not sure but that's something something to think about it's not like there's like a, an amazing five to kind of trade it off with either. I, I yeah, I would kind of lean towards keeping it as is, just kind of, kind of looking over different options and everything. But anyway, there's a, just some options to think about. That's that's what's great about Legends of Runeterra right now. Like with these regions, there are so many good options to play. Like there's just so many playable cards everywhere in all these regions. So you know you really get some some good stuff. Um, but I, I liked it. I think it. I think it did well. Like I said, it was a three-two that you know could have definitely been a four-one and maybe even a five-zero with some different decisions. So you know, like that's a that's a pretty powerful deck. You can't really ask for more than that. All right, but that's all I got here for Noxus Tribeam. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Give this deck a try. Let me know how it goes. I love hearing the feedback from y'all on YouTube whenever you try the deck. Um, so yeah, if you if you're trying these decks, you know, give me the feedback. How you know? How do you like it? How um, how's it going? All right, but that's all I got here for this one. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.